Hey backers, it's Scott the Circuit Guy here and uh, it's been a while since I talked to you. Last time I talked I believe I was very excited about circuit board version 1.72 and uh, so we ended up getting our big run of those and shipping them out to the betas and of course uh, nothing ever stays the same so I'm going to tell you about some of the problems we encountered and how we're solving them. Of course as soon as we started using, really trying to use the circuit, uh, we run into limitations. After doing some research and uh, plotting voltages, frequencies, amplitudes and position of the, the laser, we came to the discovery that the uh, nonlinearity was only at the top, top end of our travel and uh, other than that actually the, the line was pretty straight and after a little more research we basically figured out that the problem is a squish and uh, this problem look differently depending on how you're powering the circuit and really to boil it to boil it all down USB power which we're trying to drive the circuit from is not a nice steady 5 volts and uh, sometimes it might be 4.8 sometimes it might be 4.5 sometimes it wanders around and uh, so that gave, gave us a fair bit of grief um, the short-term solution that we did in software for that was simply limiting the top end to travel to 75 percent so we stayed away from that squish and uh, so that that that's actually what we're printing with right now it it works and uh, we lose a little bit of resolution and I have a solution that I will talk about in a little bit one of the other issues we came across I talked about it in the last in the last uh, update was the surge the the amount of power it takes to turn on these laser modules we're using and uh, although I managed to solve the issue of actually turning them on we still have a a huge power draw while they're turning on which of course causes fluctuations on our power line um, we made the decision to not use these laser modules anymore but to buy the laser diodes directly and build our own circuit to drive the laser diodes so this will give us the ability to um, have more control over how the lasers turned on and off uh, we should be able to avoid the, the huge surge turning them on and off and uh, basically we'll have more control over them. Part of uh, being able to drive this laser diode is we, we need to build a current source but one of the issues is the laser diode itself takes over 5 volts so with our USB being even if it was a perfect 5 volts we still didn't have enough voltage uh, we need to step the voltage up and uh, so I dove in and spent way too much time learning all about uh, switching regulators and uh, so in the end what we ended up doing uh, is building a current source for the laser control which is that was fairly straightforward but we needed to boost the USB voltage up to a, a nice solid 6 volts so that we had some headroom on the laser and uh, then we needed to also come up with an inverting voltage we were using a capacitor charge pump on the old circuit uh, in order to get the the negative six volt rail we uh, again used a switching regulator so uh, I spent a fair bit of time working with those working with a few different uh, chips for driving the switching regulator ended up coming up with a circuit that I believe is going to work uh, we've had it working my, if you saw my circuit on the bench it's uh, four different circuit boards glued together with breadboards and wires and so that's the circuit as it currently sits but uh, and I'll show you something later I'm just showed up this morning so we'll get there yet um, the nice advantage of doing this switching regulator is we get a nice solid six volts we get a plus six solid we get a minus six solid um, it does what it does is it basically draws more current from the USB in order to make the solid six volts um, because that squish that we were we were experiencing was due to not having a solid even 5 volts uh, this solves that so now with the new the new power supplies and the new laser control we'll be able to turn on and off the laser without fluctuating the power supply as much hopefully very little and uh, we have the solid plus minus 6 that we can use so we have the full range uh, we can use the full range and it's it's linear early on in building the circuit uh, the idea of turning the laser on and off wasn't initially part of our design 
Uh, it was something that Ryland added when he, uh, he looked at how we were doing the amplitude modulation. He said, hey, could we do this to turn the laser on and off? And I looked at it and said, yes. So initially the, uh, the, the on-off was basically an added bonus feature to this. Um, as we went on, it became clear that it was a fairly necessary feature. Um, the, the way we did it is by changing the carrier frequency and because of the, uh, I guess, reactance of components in the circuit, when we change the frequency, uh, it ends up changing the position of the laser slightly. And we started calling this the offset. Um, initially, this was going to be a not a big problem, but as we kept improving the qualities of the prints, it became more and more of an issue uh, compared to everything else, of course. And uh, we decided we needed to solve it. So. Uh, one of the things I discovered in the circuit, well, when I initially built it, I built it for the higher frequencies. We bolted on the lower frequencies as the uh, laser off carriers. And I had built it with a, uh, a low-pass filter with the higher frequencies in mind. And what that ended up doing was causing a fair bit of noise in the system, particularly with the laser off. And uh, it also ended up causing a shift of the laser with the laser off. One of the things I discovered was uh, the de detector diode I'm using had reactants in it that I hadn't really considered. Um, so, and this is a modification that most of you may have seen in the forums. Uh, we, this is a modification you can do is I've taken off two resistors and we've changed the value on one of the capacitors. And by doing that, we've basically drastically reduced the noise in the laser off condition and uh, it allowed us to compensate the offset in software. So after correcting the circuit, we did some tests. We uh, put different amplitudes, different frequencies in, recorded the voltages out, and graphed the results. The very nice thing we discovered was all the lines were extremely straight, extremely linear, and the offset is going to be very easy to compensate for in software. James has already showed you this in his update, and uh, he's done part of the offset compensation. There's a little bit more to do yet, and it should be able to be fully compensated for. A, uh, another issue we've discovered is occasionally when the laser... Well, this is, I guess, partially related to offset, but it's a different reason for offset. When the laser turns on, the circuit draws more current. When the mirrors go to the corners, the circuit draws more current. And we were noticing that in that situation, the, uh, the image shifts, and it's not always the, the previous offset reason. There is another reason, and uh, we noticed it was different because if you powered the circuit off of the USB port on the computer that was generating the audio, we would see this offset. But if you powered the circuit off of another power supply, we wouldn't. And uh, what it ended up being, after digging into this for quite a while, is the ground wire on the audio cable is an additional current return to the computer. So as we're drawing current, we end up having current flowing down the ground wire on the audio cable, and it actually raises the ground level slightly, which shifts the image. Uh, the absolute simple solution to this is to just run the circuit off of your, your iPhone charger or whatever USB charger you happen to have, and uh, that it seemed to solve a fair number of our, our issues when we were using the circuit. Um, the other solution would be to, to get yourself a, an extremely high quality audio cable with a good shielded, good braided shield on it, and uh, it shouldn't have as much voltage rise. This, this hasn't been an issue for everyone, but it's, it's been an issue for some that we've seen. So I had described my, my bench as four circuit boards glued together with a couple of breadboards as well and a bunch of wires. And uh, of course that won't do, so in the end we have to build a circuit. And I'm quite excited that just this morning my new circuit boards arrived. So our next step is, is stuffing this board and uh, it's putting all the components on, soldering it up, and then testing uh, all the new parts of it, making sure that everything's going to work. So thanks for watching and uh, keep an eye out for the next update.